So what does the absolute value of negative 5 mean? Well, what it really means is the distance from negative 5 to 0 on the number line. So if I'm looking at here, this is negative 5 here, the distance it is from 0, which is that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away on the number line. So that's what it means. Now, how should that really be written? If we're finding a distance, a distance we always find by subtracting something. So what we're really is, we're taking uh, negative 5 and we're subtracting 0. That's the distance between negative 5 and 0. That is what we're doing. So really, that is how it, and we don't write it that way, but that's really what we're doing is finding that. So finding that on a number line, we have negative 5, here's 0. What's the difference between them? We end up having 5 units here. Uh, is that distance. Okay, uh, so let's think about this equation, absolute value of x equals 5. Um, how should it really be written? What we're doing is we're finding how far x is, the distance between x, some number of x, and 0. And we're saying that we know that it's 5 units away. That's how it really should be written here. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and solve it here. The absolute value of x equals 5. Well, what is five units away from this zero here, there are two possibilities that are five units away. Um, there's both five is five units away from zero and negative five is five units away from zero. So that's going to give, it, give that to us. All right, so we're gonna write that in set notation. All right, so there it is on set notation. I always have to write the smaller one first in set notation, so negative five and five. All right, so that's show that solution set on the number line. Uh, there's one solution at negative 5, there's another solution at 5, that's it. Okay, so what does the absolute value of x minus 2 equals 5 mean? Uh, we're trying to find the distance between some number x and the number 2. Remember, that's that the minus is the difference the, the, uh, between them, so that's the distance. So the distance between some number and 2 is actually 5 units away. So on a number line... We're going to look at that and say, okay, here's the number 2. Oops, let's make sure we're writing here. Uh, here's the number 2, uh, and some number x is going to be 5 units away from that. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's one uh, number that is 5 units away. And then if I go 5 in the other direction, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to need a little bit more space here. And I have another one here that's five units away in that direction. So some number and the number two is five units away. Those are going to be two possibilities are going to be negative three and seven. So we'll put that into set notation. Negative three and seven are the two numbers uh, that are uh, five units away. Uh, that distance is five units away between some number, which is minus three, uh, and some another number seven uh, and the number two. So probably the most important thing when you're solving something with an absolute value in it um, is this note that I wrote up here in red here. Leave everything alone that's inside the absolute value uh, until the absolute value here is by itself on one side. So I'm gonna try to solve for this absolute value thing. I need to get rid of this two and I need to get rid of that negative five and then uh, I can then I then I can do I'm going to do something else with that here. But but leave do don't try to distribute this two in here. Don't try to subtract five within there and combine that. Just leave everything inside the absolute value uh, alone. We're going to try to isolate that absolute value by itself. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to start off with adding five to both sides to get rid of that minus five. So now we have two times the absolute value of two x minus seven is equal to 10. All right, now we want to get rid of that 2. We're going to divide both sides by 2. And now we have the absolute value of 2x minus 7. I'm going to make sure this looks like an absolute value, is equal to 5. All right, now once again, this it gets a little complicated when we try to think about it. What we did before is, you know, the distance between twice some number and 7 is going to be 5 units away. It starts to get more and more complicated as we're inside this absolute value. Uh, and it's we just start thinking about what it means on a number line. But actually solving it is pretty easy. We know that um, this absolute value of something must equal 5. 
So that something has to equal either 5 or negative 5. So we're going to write two equations to help us out with that. All right, so I'm going to write uh, 2x minus 7 equals to 5. And 2x minus 7 is equal to negative 5. All right, so now we can solve each one of these. Add 7 actually to all four sides here. And now we have, I'm going to run out of room here, 2x is equal to 12, and 2x is equal to 2. Uh, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and I'm going to get over here. I will get x equals 6, and on the right, I'm going to get x equals to 1. So I'll write those here, x equals 6, x equals 1. I could write that in set notation here, but I'm just going to write it like that x equals 6, x equals 1. Those are the two solutions. So that's a good thing to know here um, as we're looking at absolute values is just like with quadratics, we are often going to get two answers when we're solving an absolute value in there. Remember to leave everything alone inside the absolute value until the absolute value is by itself on one side. Don't try to combine anything in there. Okay, moving on to absolute value inequalities. Um, we're going to do the absolute value of x is less than 5. Uh, and um, we're going to solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to figure out where on the number line I want to put this here. I'm going to, I starting, I'm starting off here. I'm going to put zero in the middle because I'm finding the distance from x to zero uh, is going to be less than five. So that distance from zero is going to be less than five units away. So I start at zero in the middle, and I've got five units this way and five units this way. So that's how I put this. Uh, in here, I, I, I put in the units here to negative 5 and up to positive 5. And if it was equal to, to five, 5, exactly 5 units away would be here uh, and here. But it's less than 5 units away, so it's got to be, you know, this is less than 5 units away. This is anywhere inside, in between those two values, is less than 5 units away from 0. Okay, so I'm starting with the number line, and then I'm going to think about what does that mean for solving. Okay, so uh, because I am... Uh, one of the ways of looking at this algebraically is um, we're basically, we know that we have these endpoints of negative 5 to 5, and we're basically saying x is going to be, when we look at this, x is going to be both uh, greater than negative 5 and less than 5. It's the word and there that's really important. This is an and statement when we have a less than. When it is a greater than, uh, five units away, we're actually going to be going away from this this way. This is more than five units away from zero. This is more than five units away from zero. So uh, so an or st uh, statement is either going to be less than negative five or greater than five. That would be an or statement. But this one is a, an and statement. In fact, less than when it's when the absolute value of x is on the left side of the inequality and we read it like that is less than five, the less than will always give us uh, an and statement. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to say, all right, x is less than 5. I'm going to, uh, we know that there's going to be two answers because it's absolute value. The first one's going to be x is less than 5. And the other one is going to be x and, and is just going to be the opposite is greater than negative 5. Why does this, uh, we knew back here, we had a situation where um, we had the 5 and the negative 5. We know of, uh, that from before. Um, but remember that we're basically taking the 5 and we're multiplying it by a negative 1, and that reverses the inequality here. So at both x is less than 5 and x is greater than minus 5 here. So we come up with, um, with, with this idea here. So we have x is less than 5 and x is greater than 5. But where is that? What does that mean? x is greater than 5 is this direction, and all the, all the points that are both x is greater than negative 5 and less than positive 5 are these ones here. And a better way, a more efficient way of writing that one is to saying x is between negative 5 and 5. And so I'm going to write it like this. So x is greater than negative 5 and less than 5. We write it. So that's, that is actually the simplest way to write that answer. Don't want you to leave your answer with, with and in there. Now just remember, to help you remember that less than is always an and statement, we have this expression less than uh, in there. Uh, and actually, that's going to go well with our next one here, which is a greater than one. And we actually, another way of remembering that one is great tor uh, uh, in there. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to this next one. All right, so I'm starting once again with the zero in the middle because the distance from x to some number zero 
uh, is greater than five units away. I need to go uh, five, five units away, so I'm gonna include the negative five and the positive five. Uh, that's how far I'm going to be away there. All right, so now uh, I'm going to put in here, um, uh, we're going to have an open circle and an open circle, and it's gotta be, the distance has to be greater than five units away. And so I'm gonna go in this direction and this direction. These are more than five units away to be able to come up with those uh, in, the, in that direction. All right, so now how do I do that uh, with it algebraically? So algebraically, we said, again, this is a greater uh, uh, than symbol. We remember that the, the expression is greater. So we're gonna write um, both or either x is greater than five, just as it normally is written, or, and remember that it's still gonna be, a, if this is a five, the absolute value, the other one's gonna be a negative five. But because um, the idea of reversing everything, um, it's actually gonna be x is less than negative five. All right, and sure enough, that's what it looks like when we look at this. We have x is less than negative five, or x is greater than five. Uh, when I look at this here, this is okay to leave it like this uh, as our final answer. An and statement needs to be converted into something that looks like this, where x is between two numbers. But an or statement, we actually do write it with the word or uh, in between them. Um, so that's okay for us to write that uh, as our final answer. And we'll go ahead and circle that, and that's our answer. All right, let's go ahead and now work in the opposite direction. Usually we start off with solving it algebraically here, uh, and then we graph it on a number line. Let's go put that to work here. All right, so we're gonna start off with just as it's written, um, the absolute value of x minus two is greater than five, then either, or sorry, uh, yeah, is a great, this is a great tor, so either x minus two is greater than five, or remember it's a great tor, which gives me an or statement, or the other one, uh, x minus two, um, and it's going to be the opposite, less than minus five. Notice that the x minus two uh, stays as x minus, whatever's inside the absolute value stays uh, x minus two is x minus two. It doesn't become an x plus two on that side here. Um, it is just as it's written here. It's the other side that's going to change. That's the part that we found before is the five and the negative five. And we with, for the negative one, we had to reverse the inequality sign. Uh, now, we can go ahead uh, and solve this here. Um, X is not by itself because it has two subtracted. I'm gonna add two to both sides, actually all four sides here. And I'm gonna end up with X is greater than seven or X is less than negative three. Okay, so how are we gonna graph this on the number line? Uh, interesting enough here, uh, two is going to be right in the middle here. So we're gonna put the number two here, right in the middle. All right, uh, and we need to get to seven and negative three, so um, I'm gonna uh, need to be able to, to, to jump a number of units to be able to fit that all in there. So maybe if I go by twos in this case here. So let's throw in here, that'll be four, six, eight. So we go four, six, eight, 10 zero, minus two, minus four, minus six. Okay, and we're saying that x is greater than seven. Uh, we can put in maybe a little seven in here, and we need the negative three in here as well. Have a negative three fit in there. Um, and x is greater than seven. Looks like this, greater than seven, or x is less than negative three, must be in that direction. So here's our answer algebraically, and here's our answer on our graph uh, that we have here on the right here. All right, for this next one, you work in a quality control department of a manufacturing company. The diameter of a drill bit must be between uh, 62 hundredths of an inch and 63 hundredths of an inch. The perfect drill bit size would be halfway between the smallest acceptable and largest acceptable drill bit. It's got to be exactly in between this, um, which would actually end up being 625 thousandths. That's exactly in, halfway in between those two settings. All right. So to go from uh, this perfect drill bit to what's acceptable and allowed here, how far away is that? Um, well, that is this, uh, 
five thousandths away there. So I'm going to write that in here. We're going to say that's how far we're allowed to be is five thousandths away. So what we're saying is that the difference between the perfect drill bit and the acceptable drill bit must be no more than 0 0.005 or five thousandths uh, inches in there. So now uh, we're going to write an absolute value inequality in there. We're going to say x is what we're uh, is what our drill bit size is, and we know that the the distance between some actual drill bit size and the perfect one, which is six hundred twenty-five thousandths, the distance of that must be no more than that means. So it has to be less than five thousandths of a unit away. So there is a great application of what it looks like when we're like using this absolute value uh, inequality here in real life uh, for a, a manufacturing company.